Hello everybody, uh, this is your science teacher, Mr. Johnstone, and this video is about cell division, otherwise known as mitosis. Now, we've talked about the cycle that a cell goes through in its lifetime, um, including the time in its life where it will actually divide into two other cells, um, and that's what this process is all about. Now, you learned about this in middle school, I believe, um, but I want you to know more about the process. I want you to know about the process in more detail, and again, that's what this video is kind of all about. Um, so um, some things you're going to notice here on the video is that as I move my cursor around, the little uh, yellow circle kind of follows it. And if I ever click on anything, you'll actually see that as well. So if I want to point to something, that's how I'm going to actually do it. Um, so here's mitosis, and that's how you spell it, of course. And here's my phrase, the secret to the continuation of life. Of course, all cells come from all other cells, or at least the cells that came before them. Um, and that's been going on since the onset of life on Earth, and it will keep going on um, as long as life is here. So I kind of like that phrase. Um, here's a pretty cool set of images that actually show a cell actually dividing. So we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later. So let's get on with it. Uh, so you've seen a diagram like this, um, where we have the cell cycle, in other words, the cycle that the cell goes through in its lifetime. So if a cell uh, could be broken down into, or at least its lifetime could be broken down into something like 25 hours or something like a day almost, um, you have this phase called interphase, where it's undergoing most of its normal functions. Um, it's broken down into these three phases, G1, S, and G2. G1 is where a lot of just like normal growth is going on. That takes up most of the, most of the day. Um, synthesis is where the cell would actually be replicating its DNA. DNA in preparation for dividing, um, and then uh, G2, otherwise known as GAP2, um, would simply be the resting phase um, where the cell is gathering a little bit of energy um, right before the M phase, which of course stands for mitosis. Um, notice that the mitosis phase, at least according to this diagram, only takes two and a half to three hours. Um, for some of your cells, um, it really would only take about uh, maybe 90 minutes or so um, to actually uh, make this whole process happen. So we'll focus here on this M phase today. Um, of course, the cells kind of look something like this over here on the right hand side of, uh, of the video here um, where you have a mother cell actually dividing into two different daughter cells so we can uh, look at some of those phases um, a little bit later here um, so here is mitosis um, here's a little breakdown of what the uh, process actually involves as far as the words um, uh, mito means thread and osis means process those are both uh, Greek roots um, so really it means thread process which is kind of weird um, and hopefully by the end of the presentation you'll kind of get this joke here where this chromosome is kind of yelling um, at these threads of DNA um, over here so hopefully you get that a little bit later um, so what's with all the threads? Why call it a thread process? Well, here is an image of some cells underneath the microscope, um, and they're actually being caught in the act of dividing, some of them anyways. Um, here you can actually see a normal cell. This cell has a normal nucleus. It has a cell membrane and a cell wall. You can kind of faintly see that here. These are some rectangular plant cells. Um, the one right next to it is also very normal. And this whole row here, this middle row of cells, also very normal. They're in interphase. They're doing what they normally should. They're getting ready to divide, but they are by no means in the midst of that cell division. And if you look at some of the other cells, they're actually doing something kind of interesting. They're actually in the middle of cell division, including this one uh, right here is clearly in the middle of cell division. It, is, does, it does not look like some of these other normal cells that are not dividing. Um, and you can actually see these little things that look like threads of spaghetti. Those are actually the chromosomes. And underneath the microscope, they look like threads. So that's where the whole thread thing fits in. Um, some of the first biologists to actually see this under the microscope, I think that's where they got the word. And, and that's why we call it mitosis. Um, here's a little bit more about the whole thread thing. Again, if you could look underneath the microscope, uh, the DNA would actually look like this if you could actually see the molecular structure, which of course is a little bit hard. Um, but again, if you had a microscope that actually could actually do that, then that's what it would look like. This is that double helix, double staircase structure that you know of um, with DNA. Um, then, then the DNA kind of coils up on itself. So this blue thread is actually this DNA structure um, to the left, um, just kind of coiled up on itself. So it coils and coils and coils. These little green balls are actually pieces a protein um, that it winds itself around. Um, then it keeps coiling and coiling and coiling to the point where we get very tight coils. It's kind of like a rubber band that you keep twirling and, and doubling up on itself. Um, and it coils so much that eventually you get this structure called a chromosome. And the DNA is so coiled up on itself and so dense at that point that you can actually see it underneath the microscope. So this is that traditional X-shaped structure that uh, we're familiar with with regard to chromosomes. And we can actually see these under the microscope. So again, that's where the whole thread thing comes in. 
Um, here's another picture of that. Here's the molecular structure of the DNA down here. And it's coiling and coiling and coiling upon itself to the point where it's so coiled and so dense that you can actually see it. And it takes the form of a chromosome. That chromosome, of course, can be found inside the nucleus of each one of your cells. There's the nucleus labeled there. Um, but really, in reality, it kind of looks like this over here, this larger cell that I'm kind of circling right now. There's a cell membrane. The nucleus is kind of in the middle here. It's pretty big. And these dark spots are actually the chromosomes. So these are the threads. So again, underneath the microscope, things can can look different depending on what kind of cell you're looking at or how good your microscope is and things like that. Here's a little bit more on chromosomes because uh, this is a little bit more of the detail that I want you to know about cell division. Um, now, leading up to cell division, the cell will duplicate its DNA. So uh, this chromosome originally looked like, for example, just this blue one here, but it copied itself. That's cell replication, or DNA replication, rather. And so you have another copy of it over here. And we call each copy a chromatid. And I understand how chromatid and chromosome are two very similar words, but hopefully we'll be using them enough so that you can actually tell the difference between um, the two of them. A chromosome is made made up of two chromatids, at least during cell division anyways. Um, and then, uh, according to what we talked about in class as well, um, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46 chromosomes that must be accounted for during this whole process. Now, depending on what kind of organism, a plant, or a fungus, or a bacteria, or whatever you're talking about, um, they're going to have different numbers of chromosomes. Uh, humans have uh, a total of 46. Um, and here you can see that here's, for example, pair number one and pair number two and pair number three. You get one of these from dad and one of these from mom. Which one it is here, it's hard to tell, obviously. Um, but you also get sex chromosomes. This is the last pair. This is the 23rd pair um, in your, uh, this is called a karyotype. These are all the chromosomes that are in a human cell. So an X and X would be a female and an X and a Y would be a male. So this chromosome will line up here is for a male. So let's get right into the mitosis, because that's what the basis of this video is. Um, here's my definition for mitosis, the splitting or dividing of a mother cell into two genetically identical daughter cells. And you can see that here in the picture. Here's the mother cell over here on the left-hand side. A series of events go on by which the cell divides itself into two daughter cells. Uh, and the same chromosomes that are in the mother cell are in each daughter cell. There's a red and a blue chromosome in each of the daughter cells. There's also a red and a blue chromosome in the mother cell. So again, the key here is that the two daughter cells are genetically identical to the cell that they originated from, or the mother cell. Uh, and here's some uh, other things that we'll talk about uh, with regard to mitosis. DNA replication is obviously the cell copying its DNA. That's happening during interphase. We can't see that happening, but we know that it must happen. Chromosomes, the condensed segments of a cell's DNA. We just talked about the chromosomal anatomy, so you know uh, why that is. Um, we can actually see them under the microscope because they are so condensed. They are so dense, rather. Uh, a chromatid uh, is one of two identical copies of a chromosome. So each chromosome is made of two chromatids. And sometimes we call them sister chromatids because they're right next to each other. And one originated from the other, so they're, we call them sisters, I guess. Um, also, there's something new about cells that I want you to know, um, and those are these little organelles or pieces of the cell called centrioles. And you can see over here on the left-hand side of this diagram, these centrioles look like little pieces of licorice. Um, but they actually make these protein fibers that in this cartoon version over here, you can actually see each centriole, one over here and one over here, um, actually creating these fibers. These fibers are going to be the things that are actually going to mani be manipulating the chromosomes around the cell um, during the process of cell division. And those fibers are very important, and likewise, the centrioles or the organelles that make the fibers are equally as important. Um, so let's go back to our cell cycle diagram again. Here the blue part is the interphase. You know about that, G1, S, and G2. And just after G2 or the resting phase, the cell really gets down to business and starts dividing. So let's take a look at that process. So here's interphase. The cell is doing what it normally should. Here's the cartoon version of what that cell would actually look like with the nucleus labeled. And here's some of that condensed, almost chromosomal DNA showing up. But in reality, under a microscope, it might look something like this picture over here on the right-hand side. Um, you can see, clearly see the nucleus. You can clearly see, uh, or this is um, actually some of that DNA inside the nucleus starting to become visible. The larger kind of gray circle here is actually the nucleus. And this is a plant cell. Um, so this is just a, an interphase, uh, a little bit boring, but it is preparing to divide. 
And then the next phase is called prophase. Um, and there's some funky stuff going on here. Um, the nuclear membrane begins to dissolve, and you can uh, kind of see that over here in this part of the picture where the membrane, they're kind of depicting it here in this drawing as kind of just segments that are kind of dissolving away. And here it's kind of growing and dissolving away as well. You can also see these chromosomes are starting to become definitely visible in this next phase of mitosis. And the centrioles, those two little organelles that are creating the spindle fibers in early prophase, you can see them here. There's two of them. And they start to move around the cell kind of in later prophase, and they're still creating these fibers. And over here, uh, down on the lower part of the slide, you can actually see a real cell underneath, underneath the microscope. The cell membrane, you can see it traced kind of here with my cursor. And then here is the nucleus in the middle. And you actually see these pieces of condensed DNA. They don't look like these X's up here, because of course, this is the cartoon version of the scenario. And this is what it actually looks like. And of course, there's the centrioles kind of shown there, um, beginning to produce those fibers. Then we transition to the next phase called metaphase. Meta means middle, so the chromosomes will migrate to the middle of the cell. It's really important that they do this, um, but the exact mechanism for this is actually not known. Biologists actually don't know how this occurs. Um, but the spindle fibers continue to grow, and they attach to the chromosomes at this point. So maybe that has something to do with how they actually get there to the middle um, of the cell. So there's your centrioles again. Here's the fibers, and the chromosomes are all lined up. And you can see highlighted in this field of cells under the microscope, this one is actually in metaphase. So the reality is it looks a little bit messier in reality than it does here in the cartoon version. Uh, and the next phase is anaphase, where the spindle fibers actually begin to shorten, and they pull each chromatid to each side of the cell. So half the DNA goes that way, and half the DNA goes this way, or rather half of the full cop, full doubled copy of DNA goes one way, and the other half goes the other way. Um, each, each resulting cell will have the right amount of DNA if this goes according to plan. And here's a nice uh, picture underneath the microscope to actually show what that actually looks like. Again, this is a plant cell undergoing um, anaphase. And then we have telophase, which is kind of the last phase of mitosis, where um, a new nucleus begins to form around these chromosomes, and a new nucleus begins to form around the other chromosomes, and the cell actually begins to kind of pinch off. The, the two daughter cells are beginning to form, and you can see that here in the micrograph down here. These two cells are actually one cell right now, um, but very shortly they will actually be two daughter cells. So the cytoplasm begins to divide, and the cell membrane will also divide um, during this process. Uh, and there's a final phase called cytokinesis. It's often the one that's kind of overlooked a little bit. But um, right after telophase, um, the process of actually pinching off and actually becoming two distinct daughter cells is actually kind of a new name. Cyto means cell, kinesis means to move. So the two cells literally separate from each other and move away from each other. And you can see a nice example here. This is in the midst of cytokinesis. You can see the cells are still connected just by um, even the tiniest of margins here. But in a moment after this photo was taken, they probably divided into two distinct daughter cells. And that's really the last distinct phase of this whole process. I mean, here's the whole thing kind of in one fell swoop, the whole process. You have interphase where you can kind of see the DNA maybe if you're lucky underneath the microscope. In prophase, you're definitely going to see the chromosomes because they're very uh, condensed. The chromosomes will then migrate towards the middle of the cell in metaphase. And the spindle fibers will pull those chromosomes apart during anaphase. Um, in telophase, new nuclear membranes start to form. It's the only time that a living cell will have two nuclei on purpose. Um, and then, of course, the daughter cells are only formed after this process called cytokinesis uh, is completed, where the two daughter cells actually separate from one another. So there's a nice big picture of the whole process. And it is kind of a process. It's not like these photographs are taken and it's kind of a chunky process. It's kind of the smooth process where it all kind of happens in about an hour and a half or, or maybe about two or three hours tops. So there's mitosis. Um, hopefully this video was uh, informative to you. Um, you can always obviously pause it, go back, revisit it, uh, replay the video as many times um, as you wish. Uh, and this little kitty here is showing you uh, his mitosis. Um, just another little joke. And remember, there was another joke at the beginning of the video here. Maybe you can go back and see if you actually get that joke at this point after reviewing a little bit about mitosis. So there you go. There's mitosis, also called cell division. Um, and we'll definitely talk more about it in class. See you then.